worship him tonight i'd like you to lift your voice just speak charge the atmosphere over your head charge the atmosphere over over your life speak and declare i am here tonight for encounters i release myself to god i release myself to open heavens lord speak to me let your light erupt in my spirit mata ika ote ize taco priata lesser Benendo Ukapaya Lazamana no Sha Taylor Maka Malata Inkate Zuza Brana Payana Hataya Ziana Lord I give you praise 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You're all that we have tonight. And we release ourselves to you. Cause our ears to hear words. Words from heaven. Cause our spirits to be empowered. To release everything that you've created us to be. We give you praise Jesus. Because there's a stirring in our hearts. There's a repositioning. Men are coming into alignment with your divine agenda for their lives. Father, we thank you. We give you praise and glory. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Hallelujah. Just before you sit, I'd like to honor and celebrate the set man of this house and his beautiful first lady. Help me celebrate Pastor Taiwo and his dear wife. Come on, you can make it bigger and better. Hallelujah. Amen. Please, you may take your seats. Glory to God. I came tonight with my son, Akamaya Jr. And uh, some of our people from Honey Streams are here. I'm very happy to see my bosom friend, Pastor Maxwell. It's good to see you. And uh, Pastor Femi, uh, it just looks like we've always known, you know. We're friends on Facebook, and I know he's very good friends with uh, Pastor Taiwo and, of course, Pastor Maxwell as well. And we met today. And Pastor Paul, good to see you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Pastor Favor uh, and her husband are our pastors in Lagos. God bless you. And everybody else, Emmanuel and um, Ebere. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is doing great things in this meeting. And I'd like to just encourage you to set your spiritual antennae and get them ready to receive. It's possible to be in a great meeting and nothing happens to you. It's possible to be in a meeting where all the finest speakers come and say mighty things and wonderful things and nothing happens to you. Paul was concerned one time and he talked of a certain set of people in the house of God who were ever learning but never able to come to the knowledge. And I thought about it. Why, how were they ever learning? They were ever learning because they were always in the meetings. They showed up for all the meetings. They were there. Every meeting they showed up. But nothing reflected in their lives. That will not be your story in the name of Jesus. I pray that on this mountain you will have encounters with God. I pray that on this mountain there will be shifts in your spirit. In the precious name of Jesus. Our lives on earth function by light. It is my prayer that the light that will reprogram your spirit for higher versions and measures of operation. 
will come upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that in this atmosphere, you will place a demand on all the graces made available. There is nothing as bad as having graces congregate, but not having a sufficient pool on the pool of graces that are available in this in this in this mountain i pray that you will release yourself to place a demand on the anointings and on the light that will be transacted in this place in the precious name of jesus christ i will be on the speed lane i have no doubts that the tapes are going to be available cds the audios will be <laughs> available and you can get yours and listen to these things again and again and again. There isn't any meeting where one time is enough to receive everything that is spoken. You must go back to the things again and again and again to sip into the fullness of what God intends to deliver to you. The psalmist said, once has he spoken, twice have I heard. Twice have I heard. Twice have I heard. And it's my prayer that you would go back and listen to these things again until they become a part of you. Until they become a part of you. Words carry spirits. And every time you release, you expose your spirit to words under the anointing. Impartations happen. Impartations happen. Impartations happen. You wake up one day and realize that you can do certain things you never planned to do because you had exposed yourself to transactions of God that have installed things in you that when the demand comes will begin to find expression tonight programming your spirit for dominion programming your spirit for dominion programming your spirit for dominion now the dominion software was installed in our spirits at creation in the book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 God said let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion that was God's original intention so God created us to function like him God created us to carry the ability to exercise rulership and administration upon the earth upon the earth now we know that in the fall of man man lost that status but we also know that in the coming of Jesus we were restored even to higher versions and higher measures of the expression of that dominion first John 5 verse 4 says whatsoever is born of God overcome the world and this is the victory that overcomes the world even our faith I realize that our spirit has the nature of dominion our spirit in Christ Jesus has the nature of dominion our spirits are wired to dominate our spirits have the characteristic of dominion you must know it in order to experience it no matter what you are in Christ Jesus until there is an encounter with revelational knowledge of who you are you cannot experience express it in John chapter 8 we love verse 32 I love it too verse 32 says and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free that's powerful but verse 31 says then answered Jesus and said unto the Jews that believed on him if thou continue in my word then are ye my disciples indeed and ye shall know there is a knowing that comes only from continuing in the word there is a knowing that comes only from exposure to the word there is a knowing that comes only when you dwell on truth there is a knowing that is not head knowledge there is a knowing that is an intercourse between the word of God and the spirit of man bringing about a conception of the things of God that we will deliver hallelujah praise the Lord praise the Lord so our spirits are from God in Christ Jesus our spirits are rebirthed and so our spirits come from God right in James chapter 1 verse 18 he said of his will of his own will begat he us to beget means to give birth to so our spirits were given birth to by God of his own will begat he us of the word of truth hallelujah that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures so we were born of God in Christ Jesus and that spirit born of God carries power it carries power first John 4 verse 4 ye of God little children and have overcome the world 
Why? Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. It is my responsibility to feed my spirit until it begins to express its nature. It is my responsibility to feed my spirit until it begins to express its nature. I heard Bishop Oyeriko say one time that a baby elephant doesn't need to pray to become a big elephant. All it needs to do is feed from the food of mother elephant. And as it continues to feed from that food, it grows into its destiny of a big elephant. Hallelujah. So, dominion is wired into our spirit, but we must feed our spirit until the power in it begins to find expression. Until it begins to find expression. We have amazing power in our spirit, and we need to discover it and begin to release that power that God has put in us. I found something in Proverbs 18 and verse 14, and let's share. The Bible says, the spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity, but a broken spirit, who can bear? Let's look at it in a few other translations in in the message translation the bible says a healthy spirit conquers adversity but what can you do when the spirit is crushed a healthy spirit conquers adversity listen in 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 the peak of its operations your spirit can be conquered yes, sir. there is no adversity that exists that can floor the spirit of a believer there is no adversity that exists that can floor the spirit of, of a believer. A healthy spirit, a healthy spirit, a healthy spirit. No one is healthy who's not well fed. A healthy spirit has to be a well fed spirit. Just like we feed the mind with information and feed the body with regular food, we feed our spirits with the word of God. I remember Matthew 4 verse 4 and Luke 4 verse 4. He said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Our spirits can only be fed by that which comes from the mouth of God. Unless my spirit is exposed to that which comes from the mouth of God. I remember Job in Job 22 from verse 21. He said, acquaint now thyself with him and be at peace. Thereby good shall come unto thee. Receive, I pray thee, the law from his mouth, from his mouth, and lay up his words in thine heart. If thou shalt return unto the Almighty, then shalt thou be built up, and thou shalt put away iniquity far from thy tabernacles. Then shalt thou lay up gold as dust, and the gold of Ophir, as the stones of the brook. The Almighty shall be thy defense, and thou shalt have plenty of silver. Now in verse 28 he said, you shall decree a thing, and it shall be established unto you, and the light shall shine upon thy ways. Where does the light come from? This light that shines upon my ways, that creates an environment for me to decree things that will come to pass, that light comes from the word. Because in, uh, in Psalm 119 verse 130, the entrance of his word giveth light and gives understanding unto the simple. Hallelujah. Once you begin to feed your spirit with the word of God, it creates the light with which you release the creation creative abilities of God. A lighted spirit cannot be overcome. A lighted spirit cannot be defeated. A lighted spirit will command the creative power of God. The creative power of God. As you study the scriptures, you see that the word of God is God's creative power. In Genesis chapter 1 from verse 1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of God moved over the waters and God said, let there be and there was everything the word placed a demand for responded everything the word of God placed a demand for responded everything 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 Hebrews 11 3 explains it to us and says through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear intangibles created tangibles in the realms of the spirit the intangibles with God are of greater class than the physical things Paul understood this and he began to say in 2nd Corinthians 4 verse 17 and 18 in verse 7 he said for our light affliction I like how he qualified it light affliction this affliction is nothing he called it light light our light affliction which endured but for a moment worked for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory and then he tells 
us where his standing is in verse 18. He said, while we look not at the things which are seen, physical things, problems, joblessness, lack of money, the things which are seen, sickness, the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. But he said, we are looking at them. They are not seen, but we see them. How do we see them? With the eyes of our spirit. That's why in Ephesians 1 verse 17, Paul is praying for the church at Ephesus that God will open the eyes of the understanding that they may know there are things you don't gain access to until your spiritual eyes begin to see anyways let's go back to verse 18 of second corinthians chapter 4 while we look not at the things which are seen but at the things which are not seen for the things which are seen are temporal they are changeable they are transient they come to pass they have no permanent power to abide for as long as I have captured something greater in the realms of the spirit hallelujah it takes a revelation to overcome a situation I said it takes a revelation to overcome a situation if there is what you see then there is nothing undesirable that can floor you. There is nothing undesirable that can overcome you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. <laughs> Amen. So a healthy spirit conquers adversity. But what can you do when the spirit is crushed? The Good News Translation says, Your will to leave can sustain you when you are sick but if you lose it your last hope is gone if you lose it your last hope is gone and so I begin to think about the audacity with which Paul spoke I am betwixt opinions meaning should I should I not whether to go or to stay his going was not going to be determined by anything else. It was going to be determined by him. I am between opinions. Like this thing is bothering me. I've, I've really been thinking. I'm, I'm, I'm quite undecisive about this. Should I go? These are men who, <laughs> they could not be ruled over by death. Ah, should I go or should I stay? Ah, uh, to go is good. I want to go. Uh, to be absent from the body would be to be present with Christ. That is great. But I won't be able to teach you. There are, there are some things I plan to teach that I haven't finished. I want to wait a little bit more. I am staying. He could choose when to die. He could choose whether to stay. Listen, nothing will take your life away by chance. I declare in the name of Jesus, you won't die untimely. Is there a believer in this house? I said you won't die untimely. Can you shout a believing amen? The devil won't decide when you go. Sickness can't decide when you go. It will be when you're ready. He said, with long life, I will satisfy. Listen, until you're satisfied, you're going nowhere. I said, you're going nowhere. We disallow your going until you're satisfied. Somebody shout a believing amen. I realized here that there is no sickness that can conquer a believer who has a lighted spirit. That's why you must feed your spirit over anything else. Over anything else. That's why you must cut down on everything until there is sufficient time to feed your spirit. Sufficient time to feed your spirit. Hallelujah. The word of God is a supernatural programming language. Hallelujah. With the word of God, we can code our lives. With the word of God, we can code our future. With the word of God, we can, we can predict what we will enter into. You know, it's religiously correct to say, well, we don't know what the future holds. You might just die tomorrow. You can be rich today now and then tomorrow. 
The world can say that, not me. The kingdom of God is built on principles. And if you look at the beginning, the, the, the creation of God was, was undertaken by principle. God is sovereign, but his creation was within the context of principles so that it can be repeated. Mm. So Hebrews 11.3 again tells us, through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. If I too have the word of God and I have the faith of God, I will create like God. What did Jesus teach them? In Mark 11, in verse 22, is that our faith in God. The original text says, have the God kind of faith. Have, have, is something you can have. God won't ask you to have what you can't have. It's something you can have. Have the God kind of faith. And if the God kind of faith said, light, be. <laughs> Jesus came and did the same. Healing. Be, be healed is simply healing. Be. And he said, before you begin to talk, have the God kind of faith. It can be acquired. The God kind of faith can be acquired. Romans 10 verse 17 says, faith cometh by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing by the word of God. I don't know what you want to do with your life. <laughs> I made up my rich. I limit, I limit unnecessary leisure because I know the kinds of things I want to birth in my life. And I must acquire the faith for them. It is not every size of faith that can achieve oh, yeah. every kind of result. Oh, yeah. If you have faith as a mustard seed, he wasn't referring to size. It's not the size. It's the manner of operation of the mustard seed. Because when you plant it, it grows and becomes a massive tree. It wasn't the size. Because there were things the disciples couldn't do. For example, they're on the sea. The winds are boisterous. They begin to sink because water is coming into the boat. And they come and wake Jesus. Care us not thou that we perish. And he wakes up and the first thing he does is first, he rebukes them. All ye of little faith. So little faith could not quench the violence of the winds. He couldn't. He didn't say, oh, ye of no faith. No. Oh, ye of little faith. And then he rebukes the wind and says, ah, what manner of man is this? Even the winds and the seas obey him. They hadn't grown their faith to that place. To that place. And then he meets the Syrophoenician woman in Matthew chapter 15. If you read in verse 26. He says, I've not found such great faith in Israel. So, at different times, he makes reference to sizes of faith. And we see that outcomes were a product of the size of faith put in motion. It must be the focus and the responsibility of a believer to consciously move his faith from one size to another. What is your current size of faith? You won't be thinking of an upgrade if you don't even know your grade. You have to acknowledge your grade before you start saying upgrade. Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You're moving forward in the name of Jesus. Yeah. You're going higher in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So the word of God is our supernatural programming language. And we need to know how to interact with it if who we are in Christ Jesus will find expression. In 2 Peter chapter 1 and in, and in verse 19, he says, we have also a more sure word of prophecy. Whereunto we do well that we take heed. As unto a light that shineth in a dark place. Until the day dawn and the day star arise in our hearts. The day star arise in our hearts. I love that he calls it a more sure word of prophecy. 
prophecy. Prophecy in this sense is futuristic. It means there is what we can gather from this word that can create for us a desirable future. I can declare with certainty that I won't die untimely because I have gathered light from this word. I can declare with uncertainty that I will never be broke in my life because I have gathered something from this word. I once saw God as the provider. He still is. Yeah. He still is. Oh, yes, but I've also seen him as the provision. Mm. I've seen him as the provision. I read in the book of Job chapter 22, somewhere in verse uh, 25 or so. Put it up, Job 22. Let's see verse 25. The Almighty shall be thy defense. The word defense there is not protection. Please, do you have another translation? Another translation, real quick. God Almighty will be your treasure. Uh, more wealth than you can imagine. Another translation. And make the Almighty your good. I have a question for you. We know the weight of 22 carat, 18 carat gold. We can weigh it and say how much it costs. How much is God in money terms how much is God in money terms there is God the provider great revelation but there is also God the provision what did he say to Abraham I am your exceeding great reward I am I am take me I am I am I am the reward take me spend me spend me spend me when you now realize that you're spending God you won't be afraid of setting any target you won't be afraid of moving in the direction of the vision God has given you God will always give you a vision that is bigger than your current pocket because your pocket is too small to contain God's vision as a matter of fact if your vision can match your pocket it's very likely not from God because vision from God will be bigger than your pocket. Yes. But then you see God as the provision. Then the vision no longer intimidates you. You can enter into it with faith knowing that God is your gold. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. So from the word of God, we draw the light with which we program our lives. From the word of God, we draw the light with which we program our future. From the word of God, we draw the confession by which we speak about ourselves. I don't speak about myself according to how I feel. I speak about myself according to what God has said. God never speaks about things as they are. Never. He speaks about things as they ought. As they ought. As they ought. He didn't spend his time trying to analyze the darkness. Oh, the earth is without form and void. And analyzing, analyzing. He simply released what he preferred. He released what he preferred. Every light from the word carries the power to create. What do you prefer in your life? Find the light for it. Find the light for it find the light for it James chapter 1 verse 17 every good gift and every perfect gift comes from above it proceeds from God the father of lights there's an S there lights because there is a light for every experience you want to have there is a light for every experience you want to have in whom is neither variableness nor shadow of turning perfect gifts are light specific I don't know what you want to see in your life there is a light you must catch for it. Hallelujah. Colossians. Colossians chapter 1 and in verse 12. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 12. Giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made me meet or qualified. The word meet there is qualified to be a partaker of the inheritance of the saints in light. Without light, the saints can partake of their inheritance. That's why you can be born again, but you're experiencing everything contrary to what God says you will experience. And one of the inheritance there in verse 13, who which had delivered us from the power of darkness. I have been delivered from the power of darkness. One translation says the influence of Satan. 
ah, listen, that thing pressing your neck at night, <laughs> you will begin to press its neck from tonight. Amen. I say you begin to press its neck from tonight. Amen. You have to learn how to wield your authority. Yes. Don't just sit down and cry. Don't just throw in the towel. No, rev up your spirit and speak, declare. Amen. Command the devil. Tell him it's not permitted here. Amen. Many years ago, I was in my bedroom at night and I'm sleeping and then comes this evil cloud into the room it was late at night I sensed it and I woke up it was an evil presence that rolled in strong evil presence and I said in the name of Jesus Satan I command you out of this room and the windows vibrate as the demon spirits left the place you don't sit back and watch the devil slap your face no you stamp his head you crush it you kick him kick him out many miles away listen you have the power in your spirit you must light it up and you need to release it you need to release it every man is the fulfillment of a script Psalm 87 from verse 1 to 3 he says his foundation is in the holy mountains the Lord loved at the gates of Zion more than all the dwellings of Jacob then he said glorious things are spoken of you O city of God and then I saw in Psalm 16 verse 6 he said, the lines have fallen unto me in pleasant places. I have a goodly heritage. What are lines? A book is calibrated in lines. If you're going to identify the position of a word, you probably say in the 10th page and the 5th line, yeah, yeah. books are calibrated by lines. There are writings of you. Even Jesus came as the fulfillment of a script. In Psalm 40, in verse, in verse 7, right? And in verse 8, he says, Look, Oh, I come in the volume of the book it is written of me I delight to do thy will oh God even Jesus was the fulfillment of a script but now it's not only God that has scripts the devil has got scripts too and if a believer does not correctly align himself by understanding and light then he will fulfill satanic scripts over his life. I found in Isaiah 10 verse 1, Woe unto them that decree unrighteous decrees, and that write grievousness, which they have prescribed. There are satanic writings over the lives of people. You must know how to deal with satanic scripts. You must know how to enforce your dominion over satanic scripts. I'm not surprised that Colossians 2 verse 14 tells us that Jesus came and blotted out the handwritings of ordinary that were against us that were contrary to us and took them out of the way nailing them to his to his cross listen when your life does not seem to be going in the direction that is favorable you may have to deal with some scripts and dealing with scripts means lifting up words over words do you realize that Isaiah 54 verse 17 says no weapon that is fashioned against me shall prosper and every what tongue that shall rise up against me in judgment I shall condemn this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and their righteousness is of me say at the Lord look it is tongues that rise up against you in judgment what is the significance of a tongue it releases words or scripts into the realms of the spirit a quiet believer will suffer defeat I said a quiet believer will suffer defeat you must learn how to open your mouth in the word of God to counter every word that is not of God you must learn to open your mouth in the word of God to counter every word that is not of God the universe was fashioned by words and the universe responds to words it is impossible for you to continue at the same level of experience when you fill your life with words that are from God look at it in the book of Isaiah 48 and in verse 13 Isaiah 48 and verse 13 very quickly my hand also has laid the foundations of the earth and my right hand has spanned the heavens when I call unto them they stand up together he's referring to the universe the heavens the earth and all that is in it the universe is at the mercy of the Word of God every time a believer loads himself with words that are from God the universe cooperates with him 
I said the universe cooperates with him. The universe cooperates with him. It doesn't matter what you're going through in your life right now. Speak the word always. Speak the word constantly. Speak the word over and over and over. And things will begin to shift in your favor. Things will begin to work in your favor. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He has not called us to complain. He has called us to change the course of things. He's called us to enforce things as they should be. I love that scripture in Psalm 82 verse 5 that says, They know not, neither will they understand. So they have a knowledge problem. They also don't have understanding. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. It means everything around them is in disarray because they are not standing in their position as believers. I have said ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high. Verse 6. Verse 7 says ye shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. You are not supposed to die like men. You are not supposed to fall like one of the princes. And if you would gain knowledge and understanding, the game will change. If you would gain knowledge and understanding, the game will change. Because the foundation of their fall is they know not. Neither will they understand. I need to get on a crusade to know, to know, to to know 2 Corinthians 2 verse 14 thanks be unto God which always caused us to triumph in Christ Jesus and make it manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place my finances my health my academics my business my family in every place I can triumph in every place hallelujah Amen. glory to God hallelujah. as I begin to close tonight I'd like you to pay attention we must take up the responsibility of writing. First of all, empowering our spirit and writing instructions in the realms of the spirit. And writing instructions in the realms of the spirit. Let us remember that the spirit realm is littered with scripts. And these scripts govern the affairs of men on the earth. The spirit realm is littered with scripts and these scripts govern the affairs of men on the earth. And if a believer is going to excel he must align himself with the scripts of God he must enforce the scripts of God he must be conscious of the scripts of God and walk in the light that is from the scripts of God hallelujah Amen. glory to God Amen. come with me to the book of Proverbs chapter 18 Proverbs chapter 18 verse 20 and verse 21 a man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth his belly there is not his stomach his belly is the core of his life his spirit a man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled who so everything from my mouth eventually gets deposited in my spirit yeah. Many spirits are weak because the mouth speaks weak words. Yeah. I am finished. Yeah. My own is finished. Yeah. In fact, I'm dead. Yeah. You can't keep speaking things like that repeatedly and not disable the power in your spirit. You must speak words that align with God to charge up your spirit, to empower your spirit. You can have a very wonderful phone, Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra, great phone. But when the battery is dead, it doesn't matter what functions it has. It can do nothing. It can do nothing. The phone is dead. They say, ah. Brother XYZ, you have a fantastic phone. Can you come take a picture? Oh, uh -huh, uh -huh. I'm sorry, but really, this is the best camera. This, okay, just take one picture. Let's see. Uh -huh. I'm sorry. Can you video this session? We need it urgently. We have to. Uh, I'm sorry. Please, can I use your phone to call my mother? Uh, I'm sorry. You, <laughs> you are sorry as a matter of fact. <laughs> you can do nothing because it's not charged. Because it's not charged. Look at what Paul wrote to Timothy. 
or well what he wrote to the church at Ephesus this wasn't to Timothy it was to the church at Ephesus in in uh, Ephesians 4 and in verse 29 he said let no corrupt communication powerless communication proceed out of your mouth but that which is good then it defines what is good that which is good to the use of edifying uh, to edify means to build up yes yes that it may impart grace new king james says that it may impart grace to the hearers there are certain words that carry charge there are certain words that are from the heart of god when you expose yourself to them they charge you up that's why i don't listen to rubbish music it deposits something in your spirit and you can keep arguing oh what is wrong what is wrong you're being to this you're being to that well well ezekiel said in ezekiel 2 verse 2 he said the spirit entered into me when he spake unto me and he caused me to stand upon my feet that i heard him that spake words are not ordinary they carry spirit good bad or ugly they carry spirit john 6 verse 63 the words i speak unto you they are they are spirit and they are life you can't listen to bumper to bumper bumper to bumper every day and your life won't have accident <laughs> who drives bumper to bumper when we have words from heaven that carry charge when we have people who have learned how to allow and disallow you know when jesus said i'm sorry sir how many minutes do i have i'm a very obedient nine minutes amen more than enough once it's time i'll take my seat jesus was speaking to them and in matthew 16 and in verse 19 he said i'll give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and he said whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven whatsoever you lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven what does it mean to bind to bind means to disallow the word bind means to disallow it also means to forbid so you enter into your territory and you see how things are going i forbid misfortune from this family from today I disallow sickness in this house from today. Listen, people are more conscious of generational causes. You have to know that you are a generator of blessings too. A seed shall serve him, it shall be counted for a generation. My generation is blessed because I showed up. And if you think evil words have the power to travel from one generation to, to another, how about my words? I said, how about my words? How about my words? Whoa, my generation is blessed because they have a me. They have a me. I'm the termination of the course. I'm the initiation of the blessing. I forbid the course. You will not go further. Course, you will not go further. Course, you are broken in the name of Jesus. And then I pray for all the seed in my loins, seed on board. Be blessed in the name of Jesus. Does the Bible not tell us that Levi, who was great grandson, grandson or great grandson great grandson of abraham that he paid tithes in abraham an action of abraham had translated into a blessing in his generations on board that's why we do the things that we do with understanding i'm tithing today because i'm not the only beneficiary my seed will eat from my tithing my seed will eat from my offering oh my god is somebody in this house shout a believing amen did you know that your actions carry implications as believers what does hebrews 11 verse 4 tell us through faith abel offered a more excellent sacrifice than cain by which he obtained witness that he was righteous god testifying of his gifts and he being dead yet speaketh so his offering gave him a voice even after his death 
Yes. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Oh, yes. Did you hear the psalmist in Psalm 20? He said, the Lord bless you. He said, the Lord what? Remember your offerings. Wow. So I'm not giving offerings to impress pastor. No. I'm giving offerings to impress my generation. <laughs> to impress my generation. To impress my generation. Stop looking at yourself like a victim. Stop looking at yourself like a weakling. No. Arise into your place. Make some decrees. Change the order of things. Forbid some things. To lose means to allow. From today, blessing is allowed in this house. From today, divine health is allowed in this house. From today, uncommon favor is allowed in this house. Whoa, ill favor is disallowed in the name of Jesus. And you're programming things in the realms of the spirit. Every word you release from the word of God that you consistently speak gets deposited in your spirit. I realize that our spirit will generate power that is in alignment with the light it has caught. Our atmosphere responds to the light in our spirit. Hallelujah. I saw in Genesis chapter 1, God created two great lights. And the greater light to rule by day. The lesser light to rule by night. Is that verse 16? Check Genesis 1 verse 16. I believe it's verse 16. Hallelujah. So light is our instrument for rulership. Get light into that spirit. Get light into that spirit. And wherever you show up. Wherever you show up. Your environment will respond to the light that you carry. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have too much knowledge of the evil in your family. You have another family. Ephesians says that we, what? We have been born into the family of God, isn't it? Yes. And God of whom all the family in heaven and earth. Our family is made up of people in heaven and earth. That's another family. That family carries blessings. That family gives us privileges. That family gives us advantages. What do you know about this family? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. Death and life are in the power of the tongue and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Your words produce fruits. You can choose what you want to eat by what you decide to say. Choose what you want to eat by what you decide to say. Write instructions on the walls of your spirit. Write instructions on the realms, in the realms of the spirit. Write, speak, declare. Your tongue is a pen. I remember Psalm 45 verse 1. It says, my heart is indicting a good matter. He said, I will speak of the things that I've made as touching the king. And then he said, my tongue is as the pen of a ready writer. So when I speak with my tongue, I'm writing in the realms of the spirit. Writing things in the realms of the spirit. Hallelujah. Writing in the realms of the spirit. Release words. The spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in me. Romans 8, 11. He that raised up Christ quickens my mortal body. Hallelujah. I carry the forces of the resurrection on the inside of me. Nothing dies around me. God who quickened the dead and called the things that be not as though they were. Look for dead things. Come alive. Look for dead things. Come alive. Practice. Come alive. Come alive. Come alive. Come alive. Come alive. You don't sit back and mourn for things that have died. No, if they need to be alive, give life to them. I said give life to them. Lazarus was dead and Jesus showed up after four days and they're crying, oh, I wish you had come when he hadn't died. You know, you could have been able to do something. He said, but didn't I tell you I'm the resurrection and the life? I look for things like this. I've come. Hallelujah. 
this this is my opportunity to tell you that I'm the resurrection and the life what has died around you that needs to come back to life call it forth bring it back to life you have the power to bring things back to life no more complaining start speaking start acting start releasing and enforcing your authority and dominion go for light stay with the word until light happens to you we don't walk surely until our walk is girded by light Psalm 119 verse 105 he said thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path the part of the just Psalm, uh, Proverbs 4 verse 18 the part of the just has what a shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day you shall decree a thing and it shall be established unto you and the light shall shine upon your ways listen you are not ready to walk in dominion until there is light in your spirit you're not ready to walk in dominion until you have brewed light I came to say to you church brewing light requires a price you must spend time brooding over the Word of God spend time incubating the Word of God spend some extra time meditating on the Word of God give attention to it until the day star rises in your heart when the day star rises I saw the scripture that says weeping may endure for a night but joy cometh in the morning Psalm 30 verse 5 morning but the morning happens when the morning star rises and this scripture tells me that when I wait on the Word of God when I wait on the Word of God light will erupt in my spirit like the day star listen a new day can be born for you I said a new day can be born for you you can move from your day of affliction to your day of victory you can move from your day of lack to your day of abundance program the wombs of every day Psalm 110 verse 3 says from the womb of the morning from the every day carries a womb worms are fertilized by seeds the word of God is seed program the womb of every day speak into your days on board and you will walk into miracles somebody rise tonight hallelujah 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 come on open your mouth and begin to make some declarations make some declarations make some declarations make some declarations speak authoritatively make some declarations make declarations I cannot die untimely I cannot die a misfortune I'm a generator of favor I'm a magnet of blessing Kalemo Sengeta Zazabradi Ataka Lemeneketa Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death You know where I'll fear no evil Because the light shines upon my ways The light in my spirit shines upon my ways Declare it Declare it Declare it Declare it There is no doubt that God has touched you with this message. For inquiries about God's Chamber, send us an email on info at godschamber.org.ng. You can call us on 0802-340-4085. God's Chamber, committed to your total transformation.